clean sheets. Early I left lift wet sheets to the line under the jasmine tree and pull them taut to bleach in one more day's relentless sun. No rain for weeks. The sky's pillowcase blue, beach towel blue. Already the brick path burns my feet as I return to gather in the armfuls, dry in an hour. The cloudy meringue crust embrace a billowed white scribble of shadow on a shifting canvas to spread across our big bed, unfold corners as my mother showed me, she in me as I bend and tuck where blue petals scatter still from the flowering plumbago, where we'll lie later washed cool from the outdoor shower. One more night, 25 years on, and the outdoors in here with us, jasmine, plumbago, sun and light. We sleep after our labor as if we were young and nest building again, because it's spring and the birds do it, because time has stopped and so much else does not matter. As if we were young, sleep comes easy with the weight of our old tiredness. Your voice. My mind is a beating heart. The video streams in and fragments of lower resolution trickle out. I am a laborer, constantly scrubbing the way and keeping doors wide open. We want maximum ventilation, airflow. Flow is everything, my good man. Scrub and sweep, scrub and sweep. Pieces of the puzzle snap into place and the contours of my systems align with bending palm, twisted root, and meandering shoreline. Take my pulse. My mind is a beating heart. Ooh, like that. Mm -hmm. Some scrubbing on the shoulders. Some training around. Like <laughs> I'm up next. You're up. Okay. Um, this is just it's supposed Patty to... Patty Patton. This is supposed to be fun, everybody. Some people really enjoyed it. So it's called Romancing the F Word. Oops. Once the province of pirates and perverse profligates of yesteryear, contumacious culture has colluded with loquacious culprits, espousing your praise long enough to raise the BP of bullies, and redden maids' cheeks in inns notorious for laborers laborious. What ho, as you conjugate a finer point to irrigate the tongues you now populate. Raise high now the toast, the F word's foul boast, as the brain's gate slams shut. It's our limits we strut, and we wander so weary, drunken, then dreary, on a dance floor near bleary, whose eyes wobble so shot, to your home he goes not mumbling, baby, you're fucking hot. <laughs> uh, this actually happened. I was cruising out in the back country and I saw a sailboat, an abandoned sailboat stuck in the middle of the ocean with a sail slatting and no one, no one there. There's a sailboat aground on the Spanish banks. I can motor right up to her. The water's deep enough for me, about three feet of depth in this salty green sea. She's grounded at an angle, with the halyards dangling in the sea. Her shrouds are broken from the deck and swinging in the breeze. And her name gives me a pang of grief. Dawn was written on her stern. Midnight would have been more sense, her skipper was to learn. The catch was all handmade. Every inch took hours of loving, hand-rubbed craftsmanship sacrificed to the Gulf's deceptive powers. She was built to sail the ocean routes. No dockside cutie was she. She was built to make the dreams come true, made to sail the foreign sea. Her builder studied building. She was finished quite tidily. He should have studied seamanship, spent some years on the sea. For he drove her onto the shallows, and her mainsail was still set. He figured since he was miles from land, the sea should have some depth. Ah, but this is the mysterious back country that you can't see from the conch train. This is the squidgy, squadgy bottomland that changes every hour like waving a wand. 
They say that we have schadenfreude, that we like to see men fail, but I'm not like that much of all. I've spent some time in jail, and I'd like to see him save his loss and put some, put some truck tires under the hull, pump them up and float her off. Don't just let your dreams die there in 16 inches of mud. Bust your ass and rescue them, even if it takes some blood. And that's what I'd tell her skipper to do, because you see, I've been there too. I've learned you don't need a sailboat to go aground in life. All you need's a lousy job and an avaricious wife. <laughs>